Today's video, I was lucky to get my hands on a Suzuki 1986 Suzuki RG500 cassette gearbox, which is in very good condition. And unfortunately, the only thing I failed to notice is I missed getting that third dog, the gear selection dog. But no matter, what I wanted to show today was to do with these various recall and upgrade notices that Suzuki issued, which were extremely difficult to read. But basically, they, as you can see on the sixth gear, there was a change in the so-called dog and the dog gears. On the sixth gear and the second gear, excuse the oil stain there, even though to me these are almost, well, they look identical, right? I have no idea what they mean there. This uh, was a little clearer. So you can see here in the early, this is now the third, fourth, and sixth gear, fifth gear, gears. So here the dogs you can see here mesh together. The, uh, the teeth are almost in parallel. Whereas in the new style, they actually have this reverse taper. So obviously as you apply torque to the gears in this style, they're actually gonna lock together. Whereas this, I presume there's a risk that unless the uh, uh, dogs are, are strong enough, whatever, tight enough, there's a risk that these gears will separate. And then obviously the, the gears won't be in sync and they will all hit each other and the gearbox will destroy itself. So what I thought today was let's actually see how this works. So obviously here, if you look at the side, we've got, this is where the clutch attaches. This is the drive, this is the kickstart shaft. This is where the clutch provides drive from the engine and this is the output shaft which would normally have the sprocket on it right and here we have our our drum selector mechanism and here are the two dogs that I actually do have gear selection dogs and what I'm going to do and obviously at the moment these will slide freely because I don't have that third here but what I'm doing I've jerry rigged a little uh, little way of actually locking them in place so I can actually show how these gears work. But actually, before we get into that, let's look at, so it says here, so the sixth gears and the second gears, according to this bulletin, supposed to have the reverse taper. And if I, and I'll look into this in a second, but if I look at this, this is the sixth gear and I am not seeing Let's turn it this way. You know what? I'm going to put our headlight on so we can actually get a little bit more light on the subject. Here we go. All right. So here, I'm seeing a straight cut. So those are not, in my mind's eye, I'm no expert. That does not look like a reverse taper to me. That is the sixth gear. I'll show you that in a second. In fact, none of these gears, if you look at these over here, they're not reverse taper either, they're straight. And the second gear, which I believe is down here, these are the teeth that actually, if I get them to mesh. Again, hard to actually see those particularly well, but again, I don't think they look that tapered. So I'm thinking that this is an earlier style gearbox. But if anybody has any better views, I would love to hear it. The great thing is everything is in very good condition. All the gears that are here and all the shafts, the bearings and everything else, the casing looks great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just mock up this as my, to hold that third set of gears in place. I'm actually going to use this shaft here to hold, to stop these two from sliding back and forth so we can actually mock up. Now, according to the to the selector here, it's on that little uh, raised dimple there. I am in neutral. So let's see if that's true. If I just put that on the third there, okay, I'm going to rest this down. All right, and maybe I can just bring the camera a bit closer so we can actually have a see. All right. So I am. Going to have to hold basically everything together, obviously, because this, this would normally be in the engine. But I am in neutral, so if I now 
make sure that this in the, is in the middle so the dogs aren't engaging. I'm spinning the drive shaft here on this side. And you can see I'm holding the output sprocket here and nothing's happening. Great. I'm in neutral. Fantastic. So I now change to first, which is, of course, one down. And you can see here, now obviously the gears are very straightforward, actually. I mean, actually, that's just, the concept's super easy, right? So this is the drive shaft. This is the driven shaft, the output shaft. For you to go fast, you want a smaller gear on this side and a large, no, no, you want the other way around, of course. This, this one wants to spin quickly. So this would be, the, these, this combination of gears, a small one on the driven shaft, large one on the, on the drive shaft, on the driven shaft. This would actually cause, if these two gears were actually driving, this would be a very low gear. This shaft would spin very quickly. This one would go comparatively slowly, so this would be a nice low gear. And obviously, if the reverse was the case, then you would go faster. So because of that, then you can see these gears are all in a variety of sizes to drive the different gears. OK, so back to the plot. Let me make sure I'm in the middle here. There we go. All right, so here we have the, we've got uh, neutral. So if I go to first, I'm expecting the drive shaft to be spinning quickly. This one to be spinning slowly, so I'm expecting a large gear. So I'm expecting this is the largest gear. This is the one I'm expecting to now be engaged. If I go to first, you can see that the, the this will actually this it will uh, slide across, and the um, there we are. you can see it's starting to slide across. If I just turn the gear slightly to allow it to mesh, there we go. It's meshed. All right, so now we've got the driven gear. Drive, the drive shaft is now driving the drive shaft here. I'm getting all my drive shafts confused, but you get the idea. And you can see here that we are we have first gear. All right, so if I go back, of course, down for first, up to neutral, back into neutral, yes, and then up into second. Let's just do a little turn, turn the gear. There we go. Now that one, you can see here. Right, is going to lock these two together. Right? So it disengages first, and it pushes this one across to engage second. Right? He says, <laughs> come on. Oh dear, dear, dear. All right, let's go. OK, I'm in neutral. Yeah, I'm in neutral. Let's check. Yeah. And then I'm going to go into second, which is a little tricky to go when you're actually doing this. Ourselves. Come on. All right. Not easy to do when you're on camera. There we go. You saw that one pushed across. So this this is the second. It's actually driving this gear here. So if I turn the claw, if I turn the there, clutch shaft, yep, there we got second. All right. Third is going to be this gear. So. I'm assuming this is going to disconnect from here, and you can see these teeth are going to connect with this gear. Nothing's really happening on the other side. The other gears are staying pretty much as is. So let's bring it across to third. Give ourselves a little, little bit of assistance here. And not the easiest thing, as you can see, to actually do. There we go. Let's do that again. All right, you can see it's sliding across. There we go. It slides across. Into third, come on. There we go. So now this gear is locked to the shaft. So turn my, there we go. Third, nice. I don't know who invented this. It's absolutely a great piece of technology. And then for fourth, I'm assuming that this one will have to be disconnected. So this is going to have to slide across that way, and we want this gear to lock this one in. So this is probably the biggest dance of all of them. So this is fourth. All right, so let's do that again. So it disengages, yes. And did it engage entirely? There we go, so that one's engaged. So now we have fourth, fantastic. And that's really what this side of the gearbox does because now we move over to the other side. Get rid of this, I'll turn this around. And you can see actually what's gonna happen here. Now these two pins 
don't move. You can see it's just a straight shaft. Whereas on this side, what would happen now is this set of gears are going to slide across for fifth and then over here for sixth while these remain the same. So normally they're in the middle. So I'm in fourth, fourth, move over to fifth, right? So that would, cl that would slot across there. And we know that because this, this uh, groove here is pushing the pin over that way. So that would push these two gears across. So now we have fifth. Yes, indeed. And then I could do it again and again. There's no movement on the pins this side because it's a straight groove. But on this side, you can see if the dog was there, it would be pushing all the way over to, to this side. So it would shove these two across. And there's top gear. Right. So I know that's sixth. So I know these two are the, the teeth uh, of concern. And I can definitely tell they're not the reverse tapered. So that's the gearbox. So a little bit of fun understanding how these things work. Quite a complex piece of mechanical engineering. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoy that. And uh, for those that ever take their RG500 gearbox apart and see gears that are similar to this, unfortunately these gears, the new gears seem to be very difficult to find. But um, hopefully you have the upgraded gearbox that came from the factory or the previous owner, the original owner, had them upgraded as part of a recall or a uh, maintenance schedule. But anyway, thought you'd enjoy that. Thanks very much. Speak soon.